Hello, welcome to another video tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to make a spreadsheet that tracks the value of your collectibles, whether those collectibles be baseball cards, Pokemon cards, or comic books or something else. We can make a spreadsheet like this one that I've made for Pokemon cards that tracks the value that you can see in this column of those cards. And I can refresh this spreadsheet whenever I like, so I can always see the most up-to-date value and having it in a spreadsheet means I can do all my spreadsheet things like order my columns, make graphs, things like that. So the trick to get the live values of the cards is to connect Excel to the website pricecharting.com. Pricecharting.com takes note of any sales of collectibles on sites like eBay and then updates the value of those collectibles. For example, on a different page here, I've searched for the Jungle Pikachu Pokemon card and you can see all these sales here that have been made on eBay, plus the price of this card over time and four different grades. So if it just comes as a card, you'd call that ungraded, and this would be the price $1.25 right now. If it's being graded professionally, you'd know what grade the card is, which would depend on the condition of the card, 10 being the mint condition. So what I'll first do is show you how to get the information for this one card into Excel. Then after we've done that, I'll show you how to scale that up to your whole deck of tens or hundreds of cards. So what I'm gonna do is copy this URL up here, then go to a blank Excel workbook. Then I'm gonna to go to the data tab along the top and from web. So we're getting some data from this web page. In this empty box here, I'll just paste that link to my Jungle Pikachu card. Click OK. And then the first time I do this, I'm gonna get this. This is asking me if any extra passwords or login information need to be given to connect to this website. In this case, no. So we can just choose anonymous, click connect, and that won't come up again. Then the navigator window will pop up, and that gives us a selection of tables that are on the web page. So along here, we can see table view or web view. Let's click web view and we can see our website. And there's a whole lot of information in here as tables. And so this table here is the one we're interested in. And I actually know that comes from this table, the second one down here. So I'm gonna click that and go back to table view. And then you can see, not in a perfect format, but you can see the price of the cards and how much that price has changed recently for the ungraded version of the card and all the different grades as well. And from here, I can go ahead and load that data in. So if I click load, and the data looks like this. So we're part way there just for our Pikachu card. But the next thing we're going to talk about is how we can set up a spreadsheet where we can log all of the cards that we have in our collection. And then that spreadsheet will connect to pricecharting.com, get the value for each of those cards, and then put it in a single column for us. So let's start again with the new blank spreadsheet and think about a system that we can use so we can enter in our Pokemon cards and they can be picked up by pricecharting.com. And a good clue about the system we should use is if we take a look at that Pikachu card again and the URL that we use to find that Pikachu card on pricecharting.com, we see the first part of the URL, pricecharting.com slash game, that will be the same for every Pokemon card. After that, we get Pokemon Jungle and that is actually specific to the symbol to the bottom right of the picture here, slash Pikachu, which is the name of the card, and then hyphen 60. And that 60 comes from the bottom right of the card, where you can see the card is number 60 out of the 64 in the jungle set. So that's a good process for identifying Pokemon cards. Any other type of collectibles you have, you'll just have to go through the same process of seeing how pricecharting.com makes up its URL and then breaking it down. So, if I want to fill in my spreadsheet in a way that we can make those same kind of URLs that pricecharting.com uses, I'm going to start my spreadsheet by making a set column so we can say what set our Pokemon card's in, a name column where I can put the name of my Pokemon card, and a number column where I can put the number and the set that that card is in. And I'll also add a quantity column because I might have more than one of that card. Now I can start filling this in. I've got my jungle set Pikachu. I'll also add a base set Ponita. You can tell if it's base set if it doesn't have a symbol to the bottom right of the picture. And Ponyta is actually also 60 of the base sets. And I'll add two fossil set Omanites. In this case, I knew all the names of the sets that went with the symbols to the bottom right of the images. If you don't know the name of the set, 
just try searching the name and the number in pricecharting.com and then you can figure out what you're supposed to be writing in that set column. Now that we have a few entries in our spreadsheet, we can start working on the part where we actually get the values of these cards. So what we're gonna to have to do is put these columns together to make a URL for each card and then use Excel to connect to that URL just like we did at the start of the video so we can get the values for each URL. To start working with this data, I'm gonna turn it into an Excel table. And to do that, I just highlight my data, come to the data tab here and click from table range. And then it will ask me if my table has headers and it does. That's the first row here with the column names. So I can just click okay. Then the Power Query Editor will open up like this here. And if you haven't seen the Power Query Editor before, that's fine. This just has a lot of useful tools for working with tabular data. And it also lets us easily connect to data outside of our spreadsheet. And the first thing we're going to do with our table is to combine these columns to make a URL for each row. And to combine these columns, we need to make sure that they're all in the text format. You can see to the left of each of the column names, a little symbol. ABC means it's in text format. 123 means it's number. So I'm just going to click this column and go to transform and data type. Change that to text. That's going to ask you if you want to replace a processing step. Over here on the right, you can see a sequence of steps, of which there are only two at the moment, where the first step was loading the data, the source, and then the second step was changing the type. Power Query already guessed the column type and set it to number. So we're going to overwrite that so we can go replace current in here. And same for quantity, I'm just going to go up to data type and change that to text. And replace current. Next I'm going to add the price charting URLs for each row. So to do that I'm going to put them in a new column. I'm going to come up to new column and go custom column. That's going to let me enter a formula for this new column. The new column name I'm going to call URLs. So going back to our pricecharting.com format, every URL regardless of the card started with www.pricecharting.com slash game. So I'm going to start with that text. Notice how I put it in double quotation marks so Excel knows that it's text. And so after this part of the URL was another slash and then the name of the set. So what I want to do is combine this text with the text in my set column. And to do that, I can use the text.combine command. This will combine anything within the curly brackets together. And I can also put in a separator after the curly brackets. So I'm going to put in a slash here. Now anything inside the curly brackets will be separated by a slash. So inside these curly brackets, I'll put a comma and then double click on the set column. The last part of the URL is the card name and the number separated by a hyphen. So this last bit of the text combine in here, I'm gonna put in another text combine. And inside this text combine, I'm gonna put the name and the number column separated by a hyphen. So now that formula is looking good, I can click okay. And my new column here, URLs, if I click on one, I can see it's made a custom URL for each of the rows. And I can test any of these if I highlight one, copy, and enter it into a web browser. It goes straight to my card. So now I want to use Excel to get information from each of these URLs, similar to how we did at the start of the video with the single Pikachu card, but I want to do this for every card in my set. And to do that, I'm going to store the information that comes back in a new column. So again, I'm going to go to Add Column and Custom Column, and I'll call this column Value. And the command for getting information back from a web page in this formula view, similar to how we clicked Get Web at the start of the video, is I want to use the Web Page and the Web Contents formula and use it like this. So Web Contents goes inside Web Page, and within the brackets after Web Contents, I'm going to put the column with my URLs in it, which is just called URLs. So just like that, click OK. And I'll be prompted for some information about data privacy. The reason for that is some people will be viewing this dashboard and I might want to keep certain things more secure than other things. In this case, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to ignore the privacy levels for my Excel data and the data coming from pricecharting.com. Click Save. And now we have a new column called Values. And within the Values column are a selection of tables. So we've got tables within tables here. So I can click on a table and you get a preview of it down below. Now also you might remember when we did this at the start of the video where we got that data for the Pikachu card, 
It gave us a lot of information back and we only wanted a small part of it. So what we're going to have to do here is trawl through this information in this table and only pick out the parts we want. And the first way we'll trim this down is I know I only want this data column, this last column here. So to specify that we only want the data column from this table, I can edit this command which we use to get data from pricecharting.com. And just before the last bracket here, I'm going to put within square brackets the word data, saying that I only want the data column coming back from pricecharting.com. So now it's changed from a table to a list. And the next way I'm going to trim this list down is I know I only want the first table in the list. So to get the first one, I can come back up here to my formula and within curly brackets, which I can use to select an element of the list, I can put the number zero, which will give me the first one. Click enter again. And now if I click on this table, now that's much closer to what I want. So I've got the ungraded and graded prices for Pikachu and Ponita and Omanyte. So now the last bit of trimming I need to do on this table is I'm going to limit the row just to the ungraded row because none of my cards are graded. So you might want to pick one of these graded rows or you want to do this multiple times for multiple different rows. But I'm just going to pick the ungraded. So I'll come back up the top here and in square brackets for picking a column, I'll type ungraded. Now we're back to a list with three rows and the last thing we're going to filter this by is we only want that top row. That's telling us the price of this card plus how much it's changed recently. So this is $1.38 and recently it's gone up 13 cents. So to get the first row again, I'll just put zero in curly brackets. And now, so we're not working with lists or tables anymore, we've just got a single value in this column, which is really good. The only thing we need to get rid of is this price change part. So these have both gone up, 13 cents and one cent. This hasn't changed in price recently. Could also have gone down, so it could have so it could say a minus number here. And to make it so I just get this price value at the start, I'm gonna split this column. So I can split a column by certain characters. So if I highlight the column, go to transform and split column by delimiter. In here, I can enter a custom delimiter. So at the moment, it's got the dollar sign, which will split this column wherever it sees a dollar sign, which is quite handy. We do wanna do that, but we also wanna split it by the plus sign or the minus sign. And by doing that, we should actually only be left with the value of our card. So in here, I'm going to enter plus and minus. Then click OK. And now we have two columns here, but it hasn't actually split our column correctly. That's because I gave it multiple values to split by, but that tool isn't set up to use multiple values. So I'm going to go back to my split column by delimiter step up here. So go one step back and see where it says dollar sign, plus sign, and minus sign. That's what I want to split by. I'm going to change the format of this text so it's in the list format. So I'll put some curly brackets around it and put quotation marks around each item. Now that that's in a list, I'm going to change the split text by delimiter to split text by any delimiter. That's just a slightly different command that expects a list of delimiters rather than just one. So now if I click enter, as we wanted, we're just left with the value of the card. So the last thing I need to do with this value is multiply it by the number of cards that I have to get the total value of that number of cards. First what I'm going to do is delete this change type step here and add a different change type step. So I want to change the type of this value to column because it's currently a text so I won't be able to multiply it by quantity. I'll come to transform data type and change it to a decimal number. And I'll do the same for quantity except I'll change that to a whole number. Now one last time I can go up to add column custom column. I'll call this one value again, since we don't have one called value at the moment. And set it equal to value two, multiplied by quantity. Click OK. So now we have a final value column, we can remove this value one and value two column. I'm just going to control click those two columns, then right click and remove columns. I also don't need this URLs column either, so to make it cleaner, I might just remove that one as well. So now we're all done, we've got the values of our Pokemon card set. I can come up to home and click close and load. So now we're taken back to our spreadsheet and we've got a new tab here called table one. I could have given it a better name actually. We still have our sheet one here. So now this sheet one is where I'll put in any new cards I get or change the quantity of cards that I have. Then I can come to table one and get the latest value of my cards. So to refresh the data in this table, 
I can just come to data and click refresh all. And just to be sure, I can test that out. So I'll come back to my data entry sheet and I'm gonna add this card here, Dark Gloom. It's part of the Pokemon Team Rocket set. Dark Gloom is the name and any spaces in card names get replaced with hyphens. The card number is 36 and I have one. And maybe as another test, I'll just say that I got two more Pikachus, which brings me up to three. So now I've got that data entered, I can come back to table one, go to data, refresh all, and that's updated the values of my cards. The more cards you have in the set, the longer that refresh will take. You can check how it's going under data as well. Click this queries and connections tab. At the moment, there's no spinning wheel next to table one, so it's not loading. If I come back on a different day and click refresh all again, the great thing is it will get me the latest values from pricecharting.com. So I hope that's been helpful. Good luck in making a spreadsheet that tracks the value of your collection items. Thanks for watching.